Okay, if you're watching these in order, this is going to be the last animal we deal with before I move on to plants. Um, and my last animal that I've chosen to deal with is insects. Um, so we're going to talk about insect gas exchange. Now I do realise that, you know, you probably aren't that familiar with insect anatomy. So I think we'll start off with some very basics. So insects, um, you will know from having done mini beasts at school, have three pairs of jointed legs. And they have their uh, bodies divided into a head, a thorax, so that's kind of the equivalent of our thorax, isn't it? Thorax, remember, from the ancient Greek for breastplate. Um, and then below that, they have their abdomen. Now you'll see that my lovely insect here has a system of tubes inside. So it's got a little tube here connected to the outside, goes into a sort of round through the thorax and then it's dividing off into little branches. Now these are literally just chitin um, ringed pipes. The entrances to those, to where it goes into the body, are called spiracles. Spiracles. I've seen that misspelt quite a lot on the internet, uh, so do be careful. So the spiracles are really holes to the outside. So these are going to let our gases in, and they are effectively the gases are going to, the oxygen is going to come in. It's going to diffuse around this system uh, and down into the cells. That's pretty much it. These tubes lead everywhere in the insect. So they're the holes to the outside to allow uh, oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Those then branch down into tubes called, so these tubes here, these bigger tubes, and these ones here are all called trachea. So that's that, that and that. Now trachea is spelt like trachea with an E on the end, so which is why we pronounce it trachea. So these again are just pipe work. So these trachea are ringed with chitin. What do we know about chitin? We know that it's strong, it's going to hold the tubes open, so it's strong, it's going to hold the tubes open, and more importantly it's kind of impermeable to gases. So there's going to be no gas exchange going on here. And for that we have to go down to a much smaller set of tubes. So, this is about the anatomy of the insect. Head, abdomen, uh, thorax, abdomen. If we're talking about spiracles on the thorax, we would call these thoracic spiracles, thoracic, meaning of the thorax. If we're talking about spiracles on the abdomen, we're talking about abdominal, of the abdomen, spiracles. And then we've got the tube, big tubes inside, ringed with chitin, holding those tubes open, no gas exchange happening. They're called trachea. So if we move deeper into our insect, so this is a sort of schematic. We've got our spiracle leading to the outside, letting the gases in, letting the carbon dioxide out. So oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. You can see the rings of chitin around these. These are the trachea. And then they branch off into tiny, tiny uh, tracheoles. And the tracheoles 
These are the gas exchange surface. And they'll either be on the surface of the cell or they actually penetrate into cells. So these end bits penetrate cells. And I think we're talking particularly, um, especially muscle cells. So insect flight, you know, takes piles and piles of energy, packed out, the cells are packed out with mitochondria. And these tracheoles actually deliver the oxygen directly into the middle. Now obviously this is going to limit the size of an insect. So if the oxygen has got to diffuse all the way into the middle, it's going to need lots of spiracles, it's going to need a very short diffusion path to the middle of the insect. If you watch um, Hank Green on the subject of insect gas exchange, he talks about having you know, two foot big uh, dragonflies. And the reason that we could have those in the past and they're in the fossil record is that there was much higher oxygen concentration and a bigger concentration gradient from the outside to the inside. Um, and nowadays we've got only 21% oxygen, only, it's plenty. Um, uh, and therefore the insect sizes are, are fairly limited. So let's have a look in detail about what goes on in the tracheoles. So the tracheoles, so this is our trachea. So I did this diagram, misspelt it, should have an E on the end. Uh, leading into the tracheoles, which contain gas. Now gas is a great medium, it's uh, you know, it's easy to diffuse through, certainly easier than water. But notice at the end we've got this blue stuff, this fluid at the ends. So, at rest, pretty much the ends of the tracheoles are fluid filled and that's going to slow down the diffusion into the muscle. So they're not used, you know, because they're not needing as much oxygen. When it starts to be more active, as it starts to run out of oxygen, the muscle cell makes lactic acid. So, if the muscles start to use up the oxygen and make a very low oxygen concentration, they make lactic acid. This is a solute. Ooh, what do we know about solutes? So, this lowers the water potential in the muscle. So our fluid is going to move out into the muscle. So our fluid moves out of the tracheals. By osmosis. And that means that the gas is in contact. with the muscle cell. And that will make the diffusion of oxygen more efficient. Because it's more efficient to diffuse oxygen through air than it is through fluid. So as the fluid's withdrawn into uh, the cell, I'll just colour it in on here. So if we've got a muscle at rest, you might find that all of that is filled with water. But if it's withdrawn by osmosis and you've only got the very tips, then you've got really quite a lot of your tracheal exposed to the muscle delivering oxygen. Don't forget that where it's delivering oxygen to is to the mitochondria. And what are they using it for? they're using it for respiration. And they are returning then, as we can see up here, they're returning carbon dioxide, which is then going to diffuse all the way along the tubes into the outside. 
So we only have one problem to deal with now and that is the problem of water. So insects are adapted for terrestrial existence, that means living on land, and flight, which uses a lot of energy up. So terrestrial means you need to conserve water. Water means you need efficient oxygen delivery. So these two seem to be mutually exclusive. It would be better for oxygen delivery to have your spiracles open all the time to get the oxygen in. The downside is that as you get rid of your carbon dioxide through the same opening, you're also, because your insides are always wetter than your outside, going to lose water. So a lot of these spiracles have valves which close to reduce water loss. Which is great, but of course when they're shut then you can't get any oxygen in. So actually uh, they have to, quite a sophisticated system where the uh, control of whether they open or shut is just down to carbon dioxide concentration. So if the carbon dioxide builds up, the valves open, the CO2 leaves quickly because it's got a much higher concentration here than it has in the air. The oxygen enters rapidly. That lowers the carbon dioxide, raises the oxygen and the valves then close. So they're closing to again reduce the water loss. Um, some insects do a sort of a, a fluttering thing so they fully open them and then they kind of just flutter them a bit uh, just to maintain the uh, airflow through the tubes without fully opening them um. <coughs> so that's insects that's what I know